Senator Santorum, I want to ask you about something. It's been in the news quite a bit recently. There's been a large back and forth as to its constitutionality. Gangs of six, super committees, things none of us learned about in high school civics. Are these constitutional? Well, I don't think you can delegate the authority of the Congress to a, to a committee uh, the way they have. So, no, I don't think uh, but, it, but again, I mean, I, and, and, the, and the, the way they did it uh, by putting the national security of our country basically in jeopardy uh, as, a, as a fallback position uh, was uh, irresponsible, completely irresponsible, to put the national security on, the, on that chopping block. So, no, I don't think it's constitutional. Uh, no, I, I think the way they, they went about it was wrong on top of it. I want to pick up on what, on what Newt said, because I think it, it is, it's an important point. Uh, and, you know, I agree that culture is, is upstream of politics, and people ask all the time, how are you going to get this country together to do these big things? Uh, because we're talking big things. I mean, you know, uh, News, news put forward a, uh, a plan on the courts. I've done the same thing. I mean, I've been out talking about abolishing the Ninth Circuit. I mean, how can you do that? Well, you, the same thing that, that New just mentioned. I mean, the Supreme the, and the, uh, the, uh, the Constitution uh, provides for one court, the Supreme Court, and it says all the other courts are are created and can be uh, eliminated by the Congress and the President through through action. So. Uh, is clearly constitutional to get rid of these courts, but how do you get there? How do you get the American public to the point where they're willing to uh, move power out of Washington? How do you get them to uh, you know, to enact policies that certainly, as we saw in even the most recent elections, people can be vilified? I mean, uh, Paul Ryan's plan on Medicare was you know throwing Grandma off a cliff. And, and candidates run from it. I think that the key is that we have to lay out a, a vision for America and remind people who we are. I mean, I, I, Newt will tell you the greatness of Reagan was to be able to have that touch point into people, to, to get them to buy into the vision as to who we are and what direction this country is going to take. And it's, and it's not about just, and this is one of the things that frustrates me in this campaign, is it's all about economics and what's your tax plan, and, you know, what's your plan to cut this and that and the other. Instead of a vision of where America is going to go, who are we? That's uh, why so I try to inject into the to the discussion, you know, moral issues like the family, moral issues like virtue and, and faith and, and 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 respect and civility and all of these things that are very very important for, you know, creating the moral vision for our country as to who we are and what we're about. Are it's not just about European socialism and capitalism. It's about a. Uh, I mean, I wrote a book back in 2005 called "It Takes a Village." It takes a family in response to Hillary Clinton's book "It Takes a Village," and the and the whole concept was we are a society built on certain pillars, and and of, of course, one of those pillars is the con the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. But our founders understood that America was a country that uh, was a moral enterprise that we needed strong families to inculcate virtue and faith in our society, and that virtue and faith would allow for limited government. And, and the more stable families are, the more limited government can be, because the families are there to be the first, first school, the first hospital, the first uh, you, you name it, whatever, it, it, everything that a child and a family needs, and if the family unit is strong. And again, we don't talk about, we don't talk in these broad pictures and that it, I think are really important for, for candidates to do if we're going to be successful in saying to people, here's the vision, here's, and, and here's some programs for how we get here, but we first have to lay out who we are, how we got to where we are. New, as you can hear, and you'll hear tonight, I mean, a great historian who can paint those pictures. Uh, you know, I'm just the you know son of an Italian immigrant, and you know I just I just tell it from you know sort of my experience of how you know how America shaped us and our family, and you know either way it's a it's a way to to paint that positive vision of what America has been and can be, 
All right. And then we'll get to the political solution. All right, Go thank ahead. you. Uh, Speaker Gingrich, what do you think about the uh, super committee and these gangs and things like that that are that are that really started appearing? Well, look, I, I agree a great deal with Senator Santoro. I think it's, uh, first of all, I think it is probably the dumbest legislative idea that I've seen in the career of looking at pretty dumb legislative ideas. <laughs> I think, it's, I think it's dumb at three levels. I think it's dumb first because you have 535 members of the House and Senate. And the idea that you're going to basically put 523 of them over to one side so that 12 geniuses picked by their political leadership can magically achieve something that 535 couldn't just strikes me as exactly the opposite of the approach the Founding Fathers would take. Second, second, I think our choice actually is one of three paths. This is something I wanted to get into last night and we never got to it, but it's something I've been thinking about a lot. Because there's a real parallel between the super committee and Greece. They both represent failure. <laughs> and, and let me explain briefly, there are three tracks. The first track is fantasy and collapse. That, that's the Obama track. You can spend forever. You don't have to be held accountable. Who cares about deficits? You know, I can promise you, I can go to the students and say to them, I'm going to waive your student loans and it won't cost anything. Which has got, you know, the most frightening thing is he may actually believe it. <laughs> but it's clearly just not true. Because if we waive the student loans, it becomes U.S. debt. So the citizens who used to be students who didn't pay their loans get to pay the debt on themselves that they didn't pay because Obama took care of it. So if you all follow me, you have to pay the loan. Okay. The second track, which is the one the Washington establishment just loves, is pain and austerity. I mean, I, I was struck last night with one of the questions that never quite got to me, which is probably just as well because I'd already entangling twice with the moderator. Um, <laughs> but, but the question was, rank in order which cuts you would, how you would do these cuts. Not how would you solve the problem, not how would you be smart, not how would you innovate. But explain to us, you know, you know, how we can, and if you watch all these big commissions, they all come back with pain. And Washington assessment defines pain, you know, courage is the willingness to force the American people to suffer. Now, not the willingness to force Washington to suffer. So Washington now has the highest housing values, the highest per capita income, uh, and they are eager to see that somebody suffers. <laughs> the third path, though, the one that I think that Rick and I really stand for, because we both came in as Reaganites, uh, he was a child at the time, and I was so older. <laughs> <laughs> but we're both Reaganites. The third path is innovation and growth. And if the super committee were all smart, which it's not, that's what they focus on. Because if you innovate and grow your way out, people are better off. There's a, there's a third piece which he said, and all of you need to remind your own elected members of this. No cut in defense is automatic. These folks voted for a really bad mechanism. They can vote to undo it. You should not tolerate them unilaterally disarming the United States and crippling our national security because of their political incapability to reach a common sense solution. That is very important. Crook TV.